And so I work strongly and ugly to achieve the victory. Ah, sorry. Uh, Plateno. Sole 24 ore. Grazie. You are American, not Italian. Yeah, I'm American. I'm Italian. Citizen, American citizens. Okay, thank you so much. I will ask the question in English or in Italian. So let's talk about the referendum because you hope to win, of course, but we found many investors at Wall Street who are worried about the fact that you might lose the referendum. These are investors that have faith in Italy and that threaten, if there is a negative result in terms of the reforms, to just leave. So what can you tell these investors in order to reassure them to, if there's a negative outcome? Will you stay on? Will you continue with the reforms? And one last thing. This evening, will you bring some wine to the dinner with, our, with the president? This is an Italian custom. Mr. President, um, yeah, I agree with the prime minister. Your accent is beautiful, truly beautiful. So, your Italian accent, of course. Yeah. Um, on, on growth, uh, you seem to be in agreement that there is that there is a need to 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 sort of go ahead with the policy that you have pursued. Uh, on being, uh, you know, more flexible on the fiscal side. Uh, the problem is that uh, Brussels uh, is very rigid about it, and it's very rigid with the, with the Italian efforts, uh, therefore jeopardizing these efforts. What can you see to Brussels, especially after Brexit? You know, they don't seem to be moving on, on that front. Uh, uh, you know how important uh, how important it is to 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 move forward in in that direction. And do you think that in case the referendum will not go well for the Prime Minister, he should stay on and continue in his reforms? Thank you. Will be seen as a great singer. Uh, Italian singer says, we will discover this by living. So I'm almost certain that the yes will win, so you will have no grounds to ask this question. Um, you know. During the course of my presidency, I have had repeated conversations with Brussels, with uh, Angela, with Francois, and uh, others around uh, how we could most effectively recover from the crisis of 2007-2008. Uh, it is fair to say that we have made more progress more quickly. Uh, and what I've tried to point out was the reason we were able to make progress was we focused very early on in providing a, a large infusion of uh, uh, demand through our fiscal policies, rebuilding roads, bridges, investing in schools, teachers, clean energy, putting people back to work, tax cuts, put money in the pockets of consumers. Uh, saving the auto industry. But then also, uh, what was very important was quickly trying to fix the banks and infusing capital uh, and making sure they were more stable, more transparent, uh, and uh, would attract confidence so that the financial system was working again. And look, I'm proud of our economic track record. Uh, we have grown faster and created more jobs. Uh, and this past year, seen incomes rise and poverty fall more quickly than a lot of our uh, counterparts in Europe. Uh, now, I recognize that uh, Europe is a more complicated collection of states, and it's more difficult to move. And some are in the Eurozone, and some are not. Uh, and so I, I don't expect that everything we've done can immediately translate to Europe. And there's some parts of what Europe does that we could learn from uh, in terms of the social safety net, for example. Uh, but what I do know is that uh, given the very slow growth that's taken place in Europe or contraction, over what is almost a decade now, 
you have a generation of European youth who are not attaching themselves to the labor market fast enough. Uh, and if you don't reverse some of those trends, then it becomes a generational loss uh, of an income, of wealth, of economic dynamism. And now that countries like Italy uh, and others have made real progress on uh, their finances and their deficits, and there's more market confidence in their uh, position, now would be a good time, I believe, to refocus attention on growth and making investments because one of the reasons that we've been able to cut our deficits by two-thirds is not simply because we cut spending by two-thirds, we disciplined spending, but we also grew fast enough that more revenue came in uh, and that's one of the best ways for uh, for you to uh, arrive at a, uh, a sound fiscal position. Uh, and monetary policy alone is not sufficient. Now, I think Mario Draghi and, and the, the European Central Bank have done good work trying to maintain a positive trajectory in Europe, but ultimately there's only so much monetary can, policy can do if it's not combined with fiscal policy. Uh, and uh, my hope would be that uh, Matteo's right, uh, Italy has been true to its word in Europe and met its obligations, but my hope would be the debate broadens uh, as Europe moves forward around how to grow more quickly, put more people back to work, see incomes rise, create a greater sense of momentum and optimism. Uh, because I do believe that there is a connection between stagnation and uh, some of the uh, less constructive populist impulses uh, that have been uh, rising up. And, and uh, uh, those trend lines about Europe do concern me, uh, because if you look at the European experiment over the last 40 years, I said this in Hanover, uh, there's probably been no group of people who've enjoyed more prosperity and more peace over the last several decades than a united Europe. And it begins now splintering because uh, their sense is the global capitals and elites are not attentive to the ordinary concerns of people. Uh, that would be a tragedy. Uh, and, and, and my hope is that uh, that discussion, led by Matteo and others, will continue. And by the way, yes, I think uh, if uh, I, I won't weigh in on the referendum, but the reforms Matteo is initiating, certainly on the economic side, are the right ones. Uh, and in a global, internet-driven world, governments have to be able to move fast and quickly and transparently. Uh, and uh, so I'm rooting for success, but uh, I think you should, uh, you should hang around for a while no matter what. Um, Aisha Roscoe.